Bueno, y ahora lo que fue que no, o vos creí, hier, hui, hergus has. Ta far specialte again an ursha, con kindling, far more scanan, painter, agus far untuk ivre. Tonight we have a specialist. He is a painter by trade, but his hobby is film making. I'd like to introduce <coughs> you to John Creedon. John. Yes, Tony. You're very welcome to our session. Thanks very much. Uh, John, you have chosen a most expensive and unusual hobby, if I may say so. Yes. How did you get into it in the first place? Well, I suppose that um, <coughs> I always loved the cinema since I was a very young boy. And I can remember, as plain as today, the first film I ever saw, which was Cecil B. DeMille's um, Greatest Show on Earth. And I went to it with my father in 1953 in the palace as a very young little boy. And I'd say I was mystified by the whole idea of film and films from there on. They kind of took up a place in my mind like and uh, I always dreamed of sort of maybe making a film myself and directing it and that's how I suppose that's how it came about first day like you know. Now can you remember or focus back on the, the, the first time you had a camera, uh, a cine camera or any kind of camera? Well, I, I'd say the first camera I had was a little small box brownie. They were 126, I think, was the yes, size I of the remember. film. Remember those? Yes. And I used to um, climb up in trees and take photographs a sort of very long way of, of far off kind of, of objects which came up very small in the pictures. And I think that was my first type of, 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 of trip into photography. Um, the cine phonography didn't come along until the 70s yes. and I bought a very cheap plastic camera and um, kind of the projector came with it and um, so I, 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 I went out and I shot a, a two or three minute film and when I, <laughs> when I came, me. when I got it back from processing and I showed it on the screen I was absolutely hooked so I decided then that uh, I'd start making amateur films you know and at, at this stage, that, that particular camera now, it must have cost a, a month's wages, or? Oh, I, I, uh, when I, when I really decided that I was going to get really into it, mm -hmm. I had to buy a lot of books because I knew little about the actual physics of putting a, a film together, mm -hmm. and I had to read a lot about photography, and then I decided that I would buy the top cine camera that would be available at the day. So I bought a Canon 1014 um, with a 10 to 1 zoom lens, which I still have. I still shoot in Super 8, um, and I find that the quality is absolutely excellent. I have never actually bought a video camera because I would feel to take away from my, my cine interests. Um, I, I, um, I bought the 1014 in 1970 for about £290, which was a ferocious amount, a lot of money that time, but it took me a long time to collect it, of course, and yeah. I had to borrow a few bob from my mother and father as well. And I, I then uh, also bought a sound projector, and the whole thing evolved from that, so I decided then that I would make a documentary uh, film. And what was your first documentary? Well, I, in actual fact, I planned a documentary, but it didn't come about because something happened. So um, I, I made a film called The Rescue, which mm -hmm. was uh, my first attempt at actually putting a, f a story on film. And I still have the actual film at home. It's a very simple story about um, people go walking in the woods and one of them fall and breaks his leg and the dog, a lovely cocker spaniel that we had at home at the time, runs for, to, to rescue, runs for help. and gets people who are eating a very simple story eating at um, at um, at a, a table in the wood you know one of those rest tables and t guides them back to the people that are in trouble and uh, and
and uh, the very first award that we won um, uh, was in the Cork Amateur Film uh, uh, Competition. And of course, we won it with that, and I was absolutely delighted. Mm -hmm. uh, one man then joined me very earlier on, and he acted as well in another one, in one of my earlier films, was Paul Lynch. He's still a very active member of the group. And of course, uh, a really one of the right hand men now, like you could say, of it, because he knows as much about it as me, even even more. Because when we're now laying soundtracks, is I mean, laying a soundtrack is a very complex business. You could have five or six tracks of different uh, uh, music commentary. Uh, you could have even just in one track, little uh, numbers telling you when to come in and when to go out, and you would have a fix. And he mixes down all that stuff. In actual fact, the two of us laid the tracks together when we're doing it now. But that came, that came. It took us, it took us 15 years to get to that point. You know, yes. it's, it's actually making a film is the most complex process. Oh yes. How, what would you begin with, for instance, now making a film? Would you begin with the story, <coughs> scenery, <coughs> actors? Yeah. Well, I tell you now that one film that we made earlier on which is called The Innocence which is um, a very unique film in its own way because it deals with a retarded man and we wanted to show to the audience that he was in a different plane of life to the normal person and um, there was Baldwin's gate above in, in, in um, mm -hmm. you remember Baldwin's mm -hmm. estate? Caldrum. Yes, well mm -hmm. there was a big gate actually a big, big wrought iron gate there and I got the idea that I would put this as the barrier where the little boy who was friends with him, but once the boy came outside the gate, the man could not come. So he was trapped inside this gate and it worked absolutely perfect. Um, and then the films grow, like those type of films, they start with an idea and they seem to grow, they seem to get better. If the actors are good, Noel McCarthy played a part of the retarded man, he was just excellent in it. Um, and uh, it won, in, it won, uh, an, uh, it won an Irish competition outright, you know. Oh, good, that yes. particular film did. And then we went on and we made a documentary, which is, of course, a piece of history now. And that is the famous judo marathon, where the judo club went on to do 200 hours of non-stop judo. And um, uh, we made that over about six or eight months, and we put it together. And it was the first time that we actually used. We synchronised lip sync, you know, that we had the people talking oh, on yes. the film. You know? I see. And that was a major breakthrough for us there as well. Well, you have used more technical terms now in the last five or six or ten minutes than I have heard in my life. I, I wouldn't be, you know, all fair now with, with the law of the technical thing about film. But uh, film has been one of the, the great interests. Now, going along now to uh, I, 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 could I, Yeah, well, could I say something first is that we're all, all the group now, which is Pat Sheehy and John Vaughan and his wife and, and uh, uh, Paul Lynch and, and his wife, uh, Bridget, and there are people that come in at times, you know, because like for instance, writing you now a script is a very complex business and various people would compile the, all the information and maybe hand it to somebody then who, who would actually put the whole thing together in a very kind of, uh, put a rhythm into it, you know, a rhythm to get the rhythm of the film and the rhythm of the speech and the rhythm of the music. And I think myself now what I'm seeing happening is that uh, at various times we were only filming say three weeks ago now, we were working on, on a major film on the mill, you know, yes. or, or mill, or yes. local mill. It has been going on for four and a half years, this particular film. And, um, I mean, um, we know we were shooting out there three weeks ago, uh, uh, some of the final scenes, and I can see everybody has a massive input. I'm no longer actually, I mean, people know even more than me now, like, you know, they're, yes. they're, we're getting very aware. So, oh, I think that light isn't right, and we discuss it, and it is really, we really are on top of what we're doing now, it's amazing, and the stuff we got back there, I got some stuff back last week of all the middle turning, the different sure. wheels and the lights, and, uh, and all the different colours, they're, they're just magnificent. And you're happy yeah, with I'm you. very happy. Now, will you take this film now of, of the men, to an hour or a half an hour or 15 minutes, now you have to send that somewhere for processing. That's right. 
Now, wouldn't the cine camera be a, a, a lot more, a lot simpler for you? Oh, you mean the video camera? The video, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm. I have a. I, I want the screen. Like I like throwing my pictures onto walls. I like. I'd like to see I, my I picture know, I know, projected. Yes. Yeah. I know. I have nothing at all against video. Video is a great yeah, medium, yeah. but uh, it, it has it its limit. Yeah, it can't be projected onto a big screen, and I like to see oh, a big course, picture. Yeah. 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 Well, fair enough. Now, going back to the the, the, the cinema, and the, you know, you, you have the, probably, you know, you, your preferences in uh, the, the film world, directors, well, actors, have, yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. Who who would be your favorite director of films? Oh, uh, I mean, without question, um, my fav most favorite director by far would be David Lean. His work is just fantastic. <coughs> Up on the screen, his his photography. He worked with one director of photography, uh, who just called f his name was Freddie Young, and he actually was just, the two of them together were magic. I mean, they made uh, Dr. Shivago, yes. which are beautifully visual films. Yes. Uh, because basically film is a visual medium more so than anything else. And a lot of the old cinema films forgot about that when song was developed. They just stood the actors in front of the cameras and just got them to recite their stuff, you know. And they were more, of, they were more aware of sound and picture. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. When David Lean really, really made his first major epic, you could say probably, uh, Bridge in Uruguay, yes. back in the 50s. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think he brought magic to the screen, like in photography and in sound and in, 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 in dramatization. Because you had, for instance, it was the first time that you had the prisoners of all all whistling together, Colonel Bogey, as they were asked Ooh. into the camp. Yes. And it was so different to what was before, like, yes. and you major color photography, you know. Yes. And he went on to do Lawrence of Arabia, which is, I think, is. And he, he got a brilliant, absolutely brilliant film beyond belief, Lance yes. of Arabia. Yes. I mean, the visuals that he brought back from Jordan, he spent about two years in Jordan filming, you know, yes. out in the desert. And he never got to see any of his, um, he never got to see any of his, of his, of his visuals until he came back to edit the film in England because mm. uh, they were living out in the Jordan desert and uh, they had to keep the film refrigerated all the time. So as soon as it was shot, it was sent back to England to be processed yes. and they just said oh that's fine David continue on what you have is beautiful and mm -hmm. he never saw it and he came back and was chosen as the Royal Command performance in the 1970s uh, 60s late 60s and he had to actually sleep six months in the editing suite to get it ready he was a purely dedicated filmmaker yes. and he was also amazing that he could hold his audience for three and a half hours yes yeah you know long film yes. long film uh, Lawrence of Arabia Dr. Zweig and of course the film he made in Ireland, Brian it can't, yes, it has yeah. to be mentioned. Oh, well, I think the story was weak, maybe the story was weak, but yes. I just think it was massive, like, uh, I loved it, I loved it anyway, I loved the photography, the opening scenes in Strand. Yes. I've often walked along in Strand and, and kind of yes. got the feel of it myself, you know, yes. and one of the films that I made, which won the ten best in the world, was actually filmed in, in Strand, it's a story of, um, of, um, of, um, a girl who's a drug addict and who falls in love with a guy and she dies of a drug overdose and he goes to Dingle to commit suicide. I remember it, yes. You remember us, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, you have, um, you have uh, a very nice souvenir of Ryan's daughter. That, uh, that's right. Um, well, I'll tell you, like, as my interest in film grew, I got to know an awful lot of people who make films all over the world and I still know them today. Um, I went to, uh, I was invited by, uh, <coughs> back in 1987, 80, I went to Malta, I was invited by the Maltese government to, uh, to uh, their first festival, and um, out there I, I got to know um, um, uh, 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 um, an English doctor and his wife, uh, Dave Whitted is his name, and um, he, he, his father was great friends with David Lean. So, um, uh, he told me that when the film, he came here to Ireland many times and still do, and we always go to Dingle and we walk around where the film was shot because he's a great David Lean fan as well, right? Mm -hmm. We go down to the schoolhouse and there's a great pity, of course, that it's falling down now and it's no longer there. Yes. And even in the last uh, couple, few months ago, myself and Paul Lynch and Bridget and, and myself went back 
as well because there was a David Lean weekend which was really up to no nothing, like it was, it was bad, you know. But of course, the actual village was not done itself. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a great, great pity because when I was in Malta, Robert Altman had made Popeye there and the village was still standing and they still had kept it and it was a very big tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. And I felt myself what a great loss it was to Ireland sure. that we hadn't. Uh, the David Lean village of Ryan's daughter still standing <coughs> because where they shot Kwai in Ceylon is still there as well. Yes. You know, they left everything as it was after the film and it's become a shrine to David Lean because he made films around the world and he's millions of fans around the world and they still like to visit where he made his films. Yes. But um, um, he said to me, I have a very unusual thing, John. He said, I have uh, the actual booklet which was presented uh, the night. Of the uh, national uh, of the of the royal command performance, and yes. I got it from him, and that's it. Ryan's daughter. Yeah. David Lean's film. <coughs> now that was actually given to each person at the door yeah. as they as they as they went to see. It was the the first time to show on, yeah. uh, and it was also a royal command performance. Robert Mitchum was the the teacher. Robert Mitchum played yeah. a teacher, yeah, and uh, John John, um, John John Mills won his one and only Oscar. Uh, yes, for his yes. performance in and, it, actually. Uh, uh, Trevor Howard was the priest. Yes, I met John Middles actually in Malta. He, yes. presented, he was out at that festival and I met him and um, he, he, um, he spoke about Southern Ireland. He loved it. He said he loved working here. He really enjoyed making Ryan's daughter, he said, because it was one of the most difficult characters he ever had to play. Oh, I would think so. so. Yeah, he had to wear special teeth, you know. Yeah, I was thinking that he was, his mouth was packed with cotton wool of some yes, kind. Yes, oh, it was special, it was special teeth that were made for him, right. yeah, yeah. It was misshapen, mm. you know, it was mm, misshapen. Mm, that's right. And, um, it, it was, it was, David Lean got a very bad time from the critics over that film, but I think it was uh, because, you see, he sort of lifted the story uh, and he, you know, it was like a play set on the Irish countryside. Yes. And I think it upset the audience, particularly in America. Uh, there's a set. picture of the beach. Mm. Uh, that, that was inch. It was, yeah, was, yeah, it was in strand, yeah. Strand, yeah. Yes. And of course, it was a very... Was they a built very the, the village, they built the whole village on top of the mountain. Yes. And you know? it was very sensual. It was a sensual film and of course, they had a, the, the War of Independence then was brought into it. It was. Uh, and they had this scene of bringing the arms. That's right. This was my favourite scene and it, it was a, a riding horses through the woods. Do you remember that? I do indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where uh, the, the, the beautiful close ups of the um of the mats and the that, and, that's the, correct, and, yes. the, and the butterflies that's and all right. that, yeah. Spider webs. Yes, it was beautiful, all right. Um I think uh, these were the arms coming uh, ashore. Uh, I think the music too was, was um, the music was yeah. Maurice Sherry brought the music and I think the music was fantastic. You could feel it, it was kind of light, it felt That's if you right. walked along the beach you could feel the water coming in the very same way, you go do 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 you know? True. You could feel That's the water right. almost. Right. Yeah. And there was the village. Yeah. And there were some of the some of the uh, stones made of uh, the rocks made of what? I suppose the plastic. Plastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's right. I remember kicking one of them one day during that time. I suppose uh, people didn't realise. I mean, that, that cost ten million, I think, around that time. Yes. So it was a major production. Uh, it was a major production, and it was. Uh, but it it, it sold. It, it, it was a wonderful um, advertisement for for that course, right? Eh? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, yeah. uh, I was going to England that time with some friends of mine, and uh, the years before there was no one there, and the years after, it was just right. oh, all the time. I yes. mean, it really launched England internationally. Oh, absolutely, yes. And still, still today, people talk to me. Yes. Uh, I meet people. Yeah. If I'm away from Ireland, like I'd often meet people, and uh, I do always talk about sort of David Lean and Ryan's daughter, and they say, "Oh, and you live near this, this massive location." Yes. They think the sun shines there all the time because he captured it so well. He did. Yes. Uh, one day he was. Uh, I read all his stuff that was written about him, and that's a very good book there. It was written a number of years ago. Um, there's a lovely shot there in that book of of him actually directing. Robert Mitchum is here on the left. And this is Robert Robert Young, the famous uh, cinematographer, mm -hmm. who really put the pictures up on the screen. And that's David Lean himself. And they're in the schoolhouse back in Dingle. 
and he's being they're being directed. But there's one thing. Uh, he, one day he was deep in conversation, in thought, looking through the lens, and uh, Maggie, Maggie owns what? Who did all his? His uh, <coughs> he was his secretary and sort of his um, continuity woman as well was there, and she said, uh, somebody said, to her, what, what, what is Mr. Lean doing? And uh, she turned around. She said, he's going to put Ireland up on the screen, and that's what he did do. He, 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 I mean, I have never seen Ireland looking so beautiful as it does in that film. Yes, and one of the, one of the things you know about him, uh, he found it very difficult to get an Oscar for his films. They had some rule at one stage that no foreign film could get one. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's in a book about the Oscars. He won two himself, and he, his films won twenty nine. I see. So he was was a very sad story near the end of his life that um, he was. Uh, being honoured by the by the, 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 the Guild of Directors of America in Hollywood and his health wasn't good. This is his nineteen nineties and they invited him out to America to be to, for the presentation. He couldn't walk that well, you know. And um, his big worry even though he flew to the West Coast of the United States for the presentation and I have it on tape at home, was to get up when he was receiving it and walk the twenty yards to the table. But he did manage to do it with a stick. And he received his, his 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 lifetime award, and when he went back, he flew back to England, and he wasn't well. And um, the day he died, a strange thing is, <coughs> the day he died, the only place in the world that marked his passing, with the mass flying at half, uh, with the, with the flag flying at half mast, was the Dingle Cinema. And it is it is in his in his autobiography. The actual it says, the day that David Lean died. Flag flew at half mast over Dingle Cinema in County Kerry. Mm -hmm. As a matter of mm -hmm. respect to his mm -hmm. passing. Another <coughs> director who did a lot for Ireland was John Houston. John Houston lived. He lived in Galway. Yes. And I suppose the, the great film he made in Ireland was Moby Dick. Was. No doubt now, about it. Tell me about these pictures. Well, I tell you now, they're one of the very few. Uh, 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 pictures, I suppose, existing of that production, like of that particular time. Now, I have, I have quite a collection of them. That's Moby Dick, or that's that's um, um, Gregory, Gregory Peck. Peck as Moby Dick, yes. as uh, or as as the captain they have, yeah, they have, yeah. yeah. And there's the actual crowd scene. Yes, with, uh, what's uh, Anna and a man and yeah. These now were taken yeah. about 1951, I would say, 51. Yeah, to be about it. About yes, that, yes. yeah. But Father O'Brien, who walked here in McCroom as a priest, remember for many years, he was a great film fan and, and a great still photographer as well. Yes. And yes. Uh, when he was leaving McCroom, he gave me a presentation of those that he had yes. the actual negatives of, and he printed them specially himself from them. And that one of my, I mean, you could well understand, like, uh, that one of my really few things that I appreciate very much. Oh yes, uh, Richard Basehart. Um, That's right. And uh, what, what, what's he yes, involved Ri in? Richard Basehart and Noel and Noel is here Noel in the background. Noel Parcel is in the That's background. That's right. He was in Voyage to Bombay Sea in television. That's, That's right. Richard Basehart. Yeah, he was an American actor. Uh, Noel Parcel. Mm. And um, uh, I, you, uh, well, we, we, we were, were talking, talking about that man there. We were thinking he was uh, Robert Robert uh, Newton. Newton. It? Yeah. He, he went looks on, like yes. Robert Newton. He went on to make, uh, he went on to do uh, uh, Treasure Island. Treasure, that's right. And there's John Houston himself directing with the John familiar cigar there on the smoke. Yes, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the, these were all taken in Yall now. And they were. During that time. During that time. By, him, by Father O'Brien. By Father O'Brien himself, yeah. And of course, this is Richard Harris at the beginning of his career. That's right, yeah. Mm. Well, that's the most interesting, very valuable. Well, of uh, course, they are unique. Yeah. They, are, they are unique, really, like in their own way, you know. Uh, I won't attempt to price them, but uh, well, they're I, priceless. They're priceless, really, yeah. Yeah, I would say they are priceless. They have no value to someone who doesn't appreciate them, of course. No, no that's true. But that's I mean, to me, they mean a lot and to have them, because, I mean, um, that film went on, was a very famous film of its time, and it, it was one of the first major films ever made in this country, an American production. Oh, it must have been. Yeah, yes. and they spent quite a lot of money in Yarl. Yes. But um, I was lucky enough, of course, since to actually work with um, um, 
uh, the commitments director, um, Alan, Parker. Alan Parker, in an ad for Murphy's Stout. Yes, <laughs> I remember and, uh, he is. And, uh, he is. But uh, it was a great experience to see a professional director working, you know. There was uh, 80 people in the crew, and I've never seen people operate so efficiently. I've often told people that, I just couldn't get over it. And uh, very stiff in direction, though. He had me from about 10 in the morning till about 3 or 4 in the evening, sitting in one position, just taking the same scene one after another. But I, I forged a good friendship with a, a director of photography, which I'd love to have been myself, like I'd love to have been a director of photography in the motion picture industry. And it is a very unusual thing in the sense that there's no place in the world you actually can go to train as such. It's out of that you, 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 your father's a director of photography, or your uncle, and you go in, you become the clapperboard boy, then you move on, and finally it's like they give you the ticket, you know? They talk like, it's out of very close shop. Oh, yes. But, um, um, he actually had just done 1492 with Ridley Scott in South America, and um, he, Vivian Biddle is his name, and he won an Oscar, he, I wanted to see the I want, really wanted to see the Panavision cameras up close. I wanted to look through them and get the feel of them. And he let me, anything I wanted to do, he let me really, you know, he showed me around the whole thing, gave me a lot of insight how to actually squeeze the best colour out of film by which underexposing and stuff like that. You know, he was, we had a great, I really enjoyed those three or four days. But um, he went on to win an Oscar uh, two years ago for uh, Young Shakespeare, you know, Shakespeare in Love. Oh, yes, he, and and he's also the director of photography you now in the new Bond film. Yes. So he's working very high level. Like so, John, um, between your own filmmaking and um, the the film, the, the cinema world, you would welcome the Briary Gap Centre. Oh God, it would of course, yeah, I would. Yes. Yeah, and very much so. Have you seen the the? Projector and I have, there, yes. yeah, first class equipment. Yes. Yeah, first class equipment, yes. and uh, I'm quite sure if they get the right films, they'll get the big crowds as well. Yes. And people will just, you know, because cinema. Um, remember the famous foreign film, Cinema Paradisa. He said a tone was only half a tone without a cinema. That's right. That's right. Yes. You know, so it is, it is, it is, it is very true. So like true. you know, it is very true. Uh, um, way back in about 19, I'd say RT wasn't long in existence, I saw a documentary made by a German crew who came here in Ireland to make a film and they went way up to Mayo and they showed these innocent people really, you know, and they Gary Cooper, I remember forgetting, the, in the, you know, the one he made, um, uh, High Noon, and he's walking oh, down. Yes. And all the people are looking intensely and the Germans were saying over like how innocent these people were, you know what I mean? looking at this film, but I wouldn't feel that. I felt they were enjoying themselves and they had a bit of escapism for two hours. Oh, absolutely. You know, that is a great, uh, it it's is. a great bit great escape. John, thank you very much. Don't mention it. For a, a, a wonderful evening's entertainment. Thank you. Uh, and that was John Creedon giving us a whole lot of insight into films and filmmaking. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.